Welcome to the Uncommon Diabetic Challenge. Bob and I here today are gonna to try to talk to you about rituals and the importance that rituals and the creation of good habits is to achieving any outcome in life. I don't care if it's dealing with relationships, work and wealth, uh, if it's dealing with your uh, recreation, hobbies, habits of any kind are critical to achieving any level of high performance in it. And life really is about managing our energy, our health, and our performance. And there's only one way to do that. Through what we do consistently. Right. In our rituals and our habits. We are creatures of habit. So if we get up in the morning and we um, have a cup of coffee and we've loaded, loaded up with two sugars and two creams. And we love that taste of the coffee in the morning. That's one of our habits. Yeah, well habits. said. Well said. And it's the truth. If you think about what you do every day, you reach over, you hit the snooze button once or twice or none, you do it the same way every, every day. It's a habit. It's a, right? habit. it's a habit. So anything that you do consistently and that you're comfortable with means it's a habit. So if, you, if in the middle of the day you're lacking energy, in the middle of the day you're exhausted, or at the end of the day you're exhausted, it's because of the things that we've been doing the day the habits and rituals that we have during that day. Right. If we're looking at ourselves in the, in, the, in the mirror and we're saying, hey, I'm 20 pounds overweight, it's because of our habits. Well said, Bob. Now, as diabetics, and the Uncommon Diabetic uh, Challenge is about us creating rituals that are gonna empower us to live an uncommon diabetic life. So there's some science that's backing the things that Bob and I are talking about. So habits in, are created by consistent activities, rituals over a period of time it takes 21 days to break an old habit it takes 66 days to break it and then replace it with a new habit that is science backed now whatever it is that we're doing there's going to be resistance against that change that fits right in to how we've been created, how our brains work, and how we think about things. So we're gonna be talking here today about rituals for results, but we're gonna be talking about creating smart goals. We're gonna be talking about the fear that prevents us from achieving those goals and how we kill that fear so that we can move forward, right? And, it, and it's, the, it's the process of a goal that starts us to take a look at the habit that we have. The goal is the method to over to change that habit. Well said, Bob. So the end in mind is where the old sayings come from, right? If you start with the end in mind, it will tell you the actions or the rituals that you must do consistently to achieve that goal. I like what Tony Robbins said. If you want to have the life of someone else, then you have to be willing to do the actions that they do to have that life. So if you do what others do, you will get what others get. So after that, we're gonna get into some of the science around the brain and how we think. So we're gonna kill those fears and then we're gonna get into, teach you how our brain's actually working, our, our dinosaur brain our, uh, and the frontal uh, uh, brain and how the logical brain works. And Bob will really uh, speak into that. And lastly, will then try to work you towards setting some goals so that we can begin this journey of moving forward. Because if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. And we're here today about setting intention, about setting a big, hairy, ostentatious goal that it's gonna push you to be uncommon. You have to embrace that uncertainty. That's where learning happens, doing something you haven't done. You're not learning if you know what the answer is. So a lot of us expect as an example that we're gonna, um, we wanna be more fit. Yes. We wanna be stronger. So what we do is we sign up a gym membership. And I think the stats show that 75% of all gym memberships, the people go three or four times, they never show up again. This <laughs> is the business model for gym memberships. Um, and the reason is that people don't give it enough time. They go a couple times, a couple, three times. They don't, they're don't. they not sure what they're doing. They don't have the information. They don't have the support. They go, but their experience there isn't terrific. So they just don't go back. Think life comes, swamps them, 
and it's done. You know, the whole gym thing didn't work for me. Right on. Well, I think what you mentioned about the goal, the focus of where we want to go, mm -hmm. right? Because what we focus on ultimately grows. Right. It is what we become. It's going to drive what we feel and ultimately what we find. But the proximity, the reason the gym is beneficial is that you're getting around other people that are aspiring to do similar things. Mm -hmm. And that is really empowering to us all. So that's why you're here at the Uncommon Diabetic Challenge, is to be around other diabetics that are looking to raise their standard, to move from common to uncommon, to learn the skills, set bigger goals, and to grow. Mm -hmm. right. So our job is to help us break those habits and instill new habits that are gonna drive us towards those goals. So what type of goals should we set? Well, they need to be big. But more importantly, they need to be SMART. So SMART is an acronym. SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Relevant, and Time-Based. So Bob, let's talk just real briefly on, on that. So specific. Specific would be, I wanna be able to go to the gym and lift a 100-pound dumbbell, 410, on my fifth set. Right. Not my first set, my fifth set. So I'm growing from 80 to 90 and all the way up to that. Right. So to, in order to make it specific, it has to have a number, usually has to have a number attached to it. I want to lose five pounds. I want to be able to lift 100 pounds. I want to be able to walk uh, three kilometers, whatever, well, whatever the goal is. Good. Then it has to be measurable. So again, I said, I want to lift 100 pounds. Bob gonna said, it. we're going to lose five pounds. It's measurable. You can actually look at it and say, I did it or I didn't, or I exceeded it. So achievable. Okay, so achievable means that Heath can't go into the gym and say he wants to lift a thousand pounds. That's not achievable, right? So it's got to be achievable. And it's not that you don't set a big goal that isn't achievable today, but it has to be achievable in the uh, uh, final time frame which we've set to achieve that goal. Right, so I just spent uh, the last six months, I wanted to go on a backpacking trip, six days in the mountains, climbed to 8,500 feet with 60 pounds on my back. So that was a six month uh, fitness uh, endeavor where I had to be strong enough to carry that 60 pounds. I had to have the legs, I had to have the upper body, I had to have the endurance and so I set a number of different activities that I would do during the week over those six months in order to do it and, and rocked it in the end. No injuries. Well said. But it took so, time. It takes that time. Right. And now relevant. It's got to be relevant to your life. It has to be able to relate to what it is that you're wanting uh, as a whole in your life. Right? So, um, uh, as an example, if I'm wanting to be a, uh, a marathon runner, for me to set a goal of lifting a 100 pound uh, dumbbell, uh, as an example, or heavy weights, is not relevant to the ultimate end goal in mind. Mm -hmm. So the little goals that are part of the big goal have to align, they have to be relevant, they have to be linked. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, I mean there's no point um, setting a goal to take uh, cream and sugar out of your coffee if you don't have a bigger goal in mind. Well said. I think. That, that's a great way of saying like, relevant. Yeah, it's like... It matters. This goal matters because it's a step to get to that goal. Right. I mean, if, if, it re if that's really going to impact your insulin management, right, yes. getting that sugar out of your coffee, then, then the, well, what's the point of that? The insulin management is for you to feel better, have more energy, be more with it, be more focused, be more uh, uh, on, on your game in the, me in, the, in the meetings, not have your, sh your sugar lows or whatever it is. Well said. No, really well said. And the last part of SMART is time-based. Open-ended timetables achieve nothing. So you have to set a date that you are going to achieve something by. That's a SMART goal. So what stops us from achieving our SMART goals? Our brains. Well, our so brains. So there's three major parts to a brain. One is the, uh, we call it the primitive brain or the dinosaur brain. That's your fight or flight response. 
So if you're fearful in any way, shape, or form, you see danger, you, your, your logical brain is shut off and you revert back to your instinct, instinctual brain, which uh, allows you to uh, flee from that or confront the, uh, the danger. The second part of your brain, which is attached to very close to that um, uh, primitive brain, is your emotions. Your, your, uh, your anger, your joy, your happiness, your sadness is all connected there. You've heard of emotional eating? I have heard of emotional eating. There you go. Oh my gosh, I think I've experienced emotional eating. <laughs> <laughs> so let's say you're feeling tired at the end of the day. Your, your dinosaur brain clicks in and says, rest, right? Now it's you against your dinosaur brain. It's like, I want to rest. That's your dinosaur brain saying, and you're thinking, I got to go work out. And then it's like, you sit down on the couch and there you start thinking about, geez, maybe I'm a little hungry. So you go to grab some chips. Now you're sitting down eating chips. It's because of your dinosaur brain, right? And now you're, you're, you're firing chips into your face. Your emotional brain kicks in there. And we all know it feels good, right? Yeah. There's all sorts of chemicals going on um, uh, it, because you're, you're feeling good. And you're being rewarded for sitting down. Your dinosaur brain is going thumbs up. And your emotional brain is going, chips, fantastic. And you're feeling really good at that point in time. So this is a, just a little, uh, a great point to talk about then when we're setting our goals, right? A smart goal. Mm -hmm. It's really important that we have a huge reason. What is the reason that we're trying to achieve that goal? Because Be that's your logical brain that will take over that's from it. your dinosaur brain and your emotional brain. Because if there is no reason, then pleasure ultimately is what we all <laughs> seek, right? Everybody seeks pleasure. But the truth is that all growth, yeah. right, will have resistance. It's not if. You cannot grow without resistance. I go to the gym, I pick up a weight. That is called resistance training. Why? That weight wants to attach itself to the ground. It's only my body that is forcing it to defy gravity to be lifted. So that resistance is what creates all of the, the uh, mechanisms in our body without going into a scientific uh, discussion on it to grow muscle so that it can fight the resistance of gravity. So, continue with the brain. I think this is really important, but as we go through goal setting and smart goals, it's important that we understand that we can't get away from our brains. No. We can't get away it's all, it's, from fear. That's the battle. We have to be able to kill fear and kill the old habits that want mm -hmm. to stop us from achieving. Oh, and sure. that comes to a reason. Mm -hmm. The reason has to be big. It has to be powerful. It has to be emotional because emotion creates motion. So what are, you know, one, of the one of the truth about life is it's a marathon. And we have good periods of, of time and, and challenges during life, right? right? And often what we do during our, the length of our lives is we look in the mirror and we go, I'm not the person I used to be for whatever reason. Our bodies have changed, our fitness has changed, our drives have changed, our careers have changed, our relationships have changed in some way, shape, or form, and we're not the people that we were meant to be in our, in our, in our heads. And I think that's a powerful reason. Uh, it's, for one, for, it's for us to look in the mirror and say, I want to be me. I want to be me, and I want to be not just living, I want to be hot, performing at the best I can perform during this period of my life. You just turned 50, I turned 60 a year ago, and you know we, we both look at life and in terms of maybe three or four or five or 10 year periods. And I know that from 60 to 70, I want to be in the best shape of my life, 60 to 70. I want to be the strongest, the fittest, right? Yeah. Not necessarily the leanest, no. but I do want to be the strongest and fittest I've ever been. Awesome. And so, um, that, but that's my picture in my mind. And I want to, and I think that that's, um, so I'm, I'm going to have habits, I'm going to create habits that support strength and fitness. Those are two things, right? You know, it's, it's, it's quite interesting. Something that I do along this line that's really helped me is I create roles for different chunks of my life. So in my health and my fitness area, I've set a role of being a world-class athlete. Well, who is he to say that he's a world-class athlete? Well, no, no, that's not the point. The point is, is to have the role so that if I'm going to be a world-class athlete, what defines a world-class athlete? The rituals. What makes someone world class? Whether they're an Olympian, whether they're an NHL hockey player, whether they're a soccer player, FIFA, it doesn't matter what it is. It's how 
and what they do mm -hmm. that makes them the world class. Right. That title. Right. So I can be world class in my habits, in my rituals, which are going to make me an uncommon diabetic, an uncommon athlete. Mm -hmm. And I can be world class in the manner I do what I do. So it doesn't matter what it is. That's the choice we have. So I create these roles. And that reminds me when I want to go grab potato chips and sit on the couch that most of the time I'll get up and go for a walk, grab some water, grab some cucumber and hummus instead of the chips or whatever it might be. And I don't always do it. And I think Bob, you made, I'm going to use a very poor graphic, but this here is life. As Bob said, it goes up, it goes down. And you, you have these little things. But the thing that's most important that the brain wants to make us fool us on is it wants to think that these little downs are devastating. But the truth is, they never go below where we started usually. It's always a part of the journey in the climb to the goal. So just remember, the brain will make you think and make you feel like I'm worthless. I failed. No, you haven't. You've just learned. Now is the time. Right? When you get to learn how to overcome, step up and start that climb back up. And that starting the climb back up is the goal setting start. That's, that's, that's what this right. session is about. It's all that's about right. taking a look at where our habits are right now and setting new goals for that, for that new piece of climb up. That's right. So, so the challenge is, yes. what are we going to do? What, what are some of your habits that you'd like to change? Um, how, how are you, what you, on your journey, what does high performance look like? What does your ideal diabetic life look like? What does an uncommon diabetic life look like for you? Yes. We're all individuals. We're all on our own journeys and our own paths. Um, we're here to help support that. We're here to help provide experts uh, that can answer questions in nutrition and fitness, uh, energy, um, all sorts of uh, different areas of your life. And we're here to, um, to provide support, like a proximity. proximity people that are diabetics that are uh, will encourage you support you that you can link with that you can talk to that you can form support groups with to um, to challenge yourself and to spur yourself on to be the people that you want to be so with that being said we've talked about habits the time it takes to break it that's why we call it the 21 day challenge is we're gonna break those habits and have you instill in place of it new habits but you have to commit this isn't going to be 21 days and it's done this is the journey the up and down it's going to take 66 days for that new habit and then when it falls down you get back up and you just keep moving it's a process right and then in 90 days you're going to start to see really visible tangible results from it mm -hmm. so our challenge to you for this week on this exercise is to set smart goals for yourself. That it's one, you don't need to have 10. Set one smart goal that you're gonna achieve over the next three months. And then I want you to look at that and break it down into steps, like as if you're gonna go up a, a large uh, staircase and focus on the first step. Just reverse engineer it. If I wanna lift 100 pounds, and I wanna do that in the next three months, then I need to be lifting 50 pounds by here. I need to be lifting 60 by here, 70 by here, all the way up to 10. And then within the first goal of 60, begin and focus on those activities to make it so that I will continually grow. Right. And by the way, that would to go from 50 to 100 for me, that would take a year. Right. I would need a year to do that. That's a reasonable amount of time for me to go comfortably from lifting 50 pounds of dumbbells to 100 pound dumbbells. It would take a whole year to do that. Well said. So in the example, the point is have a clear goal, have a clear timeline you want to achieve it. You need to have that focus because the key to success is really clear focus because focus brings clarity. Clarity is simplicity. That focus will definitely lead you and has led you to here to be surrounded by people that are also like-minded. Maybe different goals, but the point is they're goal-orientated and they're focused 
on growing and learning and achieving those outcomes. So, one goal, write it down, it has to be specific, measurable, achievable, related to your main goal and time-based. And ultimately, just to, to know, you are going to have resistance. The minute you write a goal down, <laughs> the resistance begins. That is just fear. It's false evidence and false uh, events appearing real. It's your dinosaur brain. It is. It's your dinosaur <laughs> brain. And you've got to remember that question everything. Question your beliefs. Why do I think that? What of my needs are being met? Right? By it. I mean, am I looking for certainty? Am I looking for variety or uh, adventure? Significance or connection and love? Am I trying to grow or give? These are the six human needs. So ask those questions as you set these goals. What's in it for me? And if you relate it to those six needs, you're going to understand yourself. And if you ask questions about why people are doing certain things in life, it always comes back to one of these needs. Everything we do in life is about it. And we can change just by setting our intention on a smart goal and creating the rituals which drive habits, which gives us the outcome. If you do what you've always done, you're going to get what you've always got. If you want to have what others have, do what they do. If you want to have what others will not have, do what they will not do. So my encouragement to you today, dream big. Decide on it. Document it. Write it down. And then begin doing the activities that you need to do to achieve it and eliminate everything and everybody that is going against that. It's critical. Automate it. Set your calendar on your phone, on your watch, when you're going to the gym, when you're going to eat, when you're going to do your blood tests, when I can go on with that. Schedule it. Set alarms. And eventually... You'll go, oh, I just did it. And then the alarm went off after. Use the tools. And we're going to be talking about that in the Uncommon Diabetic Challenge on technology and how to use it to help you grow and learn uncommon habits. Keep in touch with us and let us know how you're doing by pictures on Instagram at the Uncommon Diabetic. Um, Uncommon Diabetic. Um, the Facebook page. Facebook page, pictures. Challenge, challenge uh, other people on the on the p uh, pages that uh, that y that you meet, and of course, when you join the Uncommon Diabetic, you'll have a, a support group of people around you. You make some friends from all over the world uh, that are doing the same things you're doing. So we look forward to seeing that. We look forward to hearing your challenge. You can always write Heath or myself and tell us about what you're doing. Ask questions from us too. We have all sorts of expertise and experts that. Um, that are available to answer questions, very specific questions about how many carbs should I be having, how much water should I be drinking, um, where do I shop, what I should I be shopping for, what does a meal plan look like? All those sorts of things are available to you at the Common Diabetic. Thank you guys. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on uh, your small group uh, Zoom meetings. Thanks. All the best. <laughs>